It's Steve Pagliuca. He is a managing partner at Bain Capital. Yes, Bain Capital, the same firm that Mitt Romney used to run, quite a bit of a different place than it was back then. First of all, it's a lot bigger. Steve, it's great to see you here at the World Economic Forum. We get this chance at least every Davos and sometimes a little more frequently. Um, we have to dispense with this whole issue that's come up in the course of the Republican campaign. Bain Capital, the firm, your firm, attracting a lot of negative press and attention thanks to this presidential contest. How do you feel? Well, you know, I think it comes with the territory. Uh, Bain Capital was founded back in 1984 with the, the sole purpose of building businesses. We all came from consulting. Our kind of DNA was Bain and Company, where we go in and try to grow companies. And it's kind of a misnomer out there that, that people talk about uh, uh, private equity. It, it used to be called venture capital. The private equity is a recent turn of art, but it may be called very public equity now, given all the press. But it's a misnomer that you really come in and, 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 and the strategy is to cut costs. The strategy is to grow companies. They become more valuable when you grow them. And when you think about it, our Bain Capital really was a venture capital firm, did 60 uh, venture and expansion type financings in the, in the first 10 years, and we're still doing a lot of those today. Capital formation is key. Bain Capital is not trying to create jobs. It's trying to create great companies, but great companies create jobs. I see. Has, will all of this in any way damage the firm? Is it going to damage the way that your employees or your portfolio company employees think of themselves, uh, the companies, or, or even your limited partners? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, our limited partners have been with us for, for 28 years, many of them. Uh, they understand the good work we do. Our employees wake up every day trying to build businesses. And we've been through this. You know, Romney's run four times. I ran once for, for Senate. And what you realize, unfortunately, running for politics is a different breed. There's going to be hyperbole. There's going to be false charges. But look at what's going on right now. It's, it's more like a soap opera than, than an election. But you can't be happy about it. We're, we're, we, you know, we just keep our heads down and, and, and try to add value, try to build these companies. And our investors are happy. Uh, the companies are happy. They, they know us. They work with us day to day. The rest of this, it, you know, pe people in America recognize there is so much fluff in these politics. They're not even talking about the issues. They're talking about things that happened 20 years ago, all hyperbole, distorted. We're a great company. We build great companies, and 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 so this will this will pass. This shall this just shall to pass like the other elections. Do you think it'll passed. blow over? Absolutely. The attention on bank capital, the attention on private equity, well, think, with with no fallout, no consequences. I, I think I think there'll be deservedly attention on private equity because people don't understand private equity, and 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 the good opportunity here is for people to get out and explain what private equity does. You know, basically it goes in and transforms companies, makes them better companies, and I think that's good for America and good for the world. One thing that has come up in the context of Mitt Romney's taxes, in particular, is the whole treatment of carried interest as income or investment income. Uh, Don Gogel, your buddy. Clayton DeBillier and Rice was sitting in this very chair not a few minutes ago and said, you know, if it ends up eliminating the that exemption, that sort of preferential treatment on carried interest, he'd be okay with it. How about you? You know, I, I think everybody's okay with, with whatever a fair tax regime is for America. The, the tax code uh, is just, you know, incredibly, as you know, convoluted, um, many, many pages, many, many, you can see from all this discussion, it's almost unintelligible. So, so to me, the main issue is we've got to have a fair tax code that people would believe are fair. Private equity people don't wake up every, up every day. Bank capital, we don't wake up every day saying, well, what's, what's the tax code? We wake up trying to build great businesses and, and we'll pay all the taxes that are necessary. The big issue on taxes to me that we have to think through is we have the highest amount of capital formation in the world, in America. Uh, Silicon Valley, all the great companies have been formed, startups every day. If you look at the countries out there right now, the 25 OECD countries, half of them have, have w rates way lower than the United States right now. Singapore, um, China, the Netherlands, so Italy. You believe something needs to be done. Well, well, there's that half, and, the, and, and, then, and, then, and then a few have higher. Denmark, a few companies have 40% rates. So the, the policy issue which needs to be studied is, is the capital gains rate, what's the differential between ordinary incomes and capital gains to continue to incent that great capital formation we've had in the U.S.? We've been a leader in that. We've built many, many thousands of venture businesses around that and that builds companies. Steve, if Bain Capital is a great company and a company that builds companies, and private equity is a useful industry, as you say, why is it that until the World Economic Forum, until I had a chance to talk to you and Don Gogel, that not one of the leaders of your industry has stepped up to defend it? David Rubenstein, silent. Henry Kravis, silent. Steve Schwartzman, silent. And they aren't going anywhere near a television camera. I know. Well, you know, I, th I think the, the industry, to its credit, 
really believes in the strength of management teams and building companies. So, so the credit should be to the management teams, not to the private equity firms. And, and, and that's why it's called private equity. It's not called public equity. Maybe now, you know, it can be called very public equity. But uh, I think that's the reason. Private equity has been a long time. It's not nefarious. It's behind the scenes, supplying capital, helping great management teams run great companies. That's where the credit belongs. And so I, I think people stay out of it. And secondly, this is a highly heated you know, political race. And in the political race, all this hyperbole gets thrown around. And, and you, you know, should know. It, You've it, run for public yeah, office. Absolutely. It, it, the same thing happened to me. Uh, it goes away, but it's not good while it's happening. Quick question. You're here in Europe, so am I. We're sitting here thinking about Europe and its problems. What kinds of opportunities exist for a firm like yours here? Um, some private equity firms are salivating at the prospect of buying in Europe at distressed valuations. How do you look at it? Well, at Bain Capital, we, we really started out, as I said, as kind of microeconomists, you know, how do you get a business to grow, take share, uh, add new products, invest in R&D, those kinds of things? You have to put a macro overlay, and, and, and an important thing of coming here is you hear all the views about Europe. If Europe was going to shrink 5% next year, you have to be careful when you buy a company if you're, if you're assuming great demand, if you're, Europe's shrinking. So you get a good macro picture. But the fundamentals are, what is that company going to do? And when, when these economic crises happen, there's a lot of uncertainty, and sometimes you can buy companies for good valuations. Private equity has always performed well in these down markets because they can take the time, they can actually weather the storm because you don't have to get quarterly earnings. We can we keep companies five years, seven years, ten years, uh, and you can get through that. So if you see value and you see long-term growth, you can take short-term blips. But you know, you, you have to have a good picture. Uh, is there going to be a crash or not? Obviously, Europe is a very precarious situation with Greece, with Spain. Uh, we've moved from, in the U.S., we've moved out of the banking crisis into our own kind of sovereign debt crisis. Europe has two of those going on. They didn't fix the banking, and there's a sovereign debt crisis as well. Well, it sounds like a very reasonable perspective. Steve, thank you very much for joining me here uh, on the Inside Track and for sharing me with me your views and, and making a spirited and passionate defense for what clearly you believe is a good industry and a good firm. It's well, nice to see hopefully you. we won't have to make defenses because the facts are, you know, you know, we're growing companies and great things are happening out there. All right. We wish you luck, Thanks. of course. That is Steve Paliuka. He is a managing partner at Bain Capital here at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland.